privilege of working with the Southwest Indiana District again. And I think this is the third time we've hosted them, but the first time in Honduras and the first time for an all teen group. Since this was a teen group, I really wanted to show them the many aspects of missions here in Honduras and get a better understanding of life here in Honduras too. We did a lot of different things to accomplish this goal. Now the first day, we worked at the campground. Now uh, we spent a half a day working, uh, painting around the uh, facility, repairing fences, repairing some tables, and reinforcing some of the bunk beds. And then we spent the second half of the day at the market in El Progreso. Um, while we were there, the team also got to experience a parade. Uh, I'm not sure what the parade was for, but um, we were there and uh, there was like five or six marching bands that came up in, in procession. And the first band played a special number for us and then the parade began and we were able to see all the bands that go through um, the parade. So that was a nice surprise. Um, day two and three, we spent time in El Progreso, uh, which is about 15 minutes away from camp. At El Progreso, we had a lot of cleaning up to do. We also framed and hung drywall for two classrooms in the upstairs area. And this upstairs area will be Sunday school classrooms uh, used for an extension for the seminary and also will be used for uh, the children's program they have there, uh, like a feeding program. They also did some painting at El Progreso. Uh, we painted the breezeway underneath that was created when we put the floor in upstairs. And also upstairs classrooms were painted as well. We dug a hole for a new water line and we also prepared some bags of food for distribution at our next two locations. Uh, it was a busy day and uh, lots of work was done over those, those two days. Day four and five, we headed up to Puerto Cortez and the drive was about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and a half to get up there. Our goal here was to continue to build a relationship between the public schools and the church and to share the gospel with the students. We have a mission church in this area and they're currently meeting in a house. Hopefully after the work that was done at the school, they will allow the church to meet in the school now versus in the house, which will be nice because it will provide the church with more room to grow. And the ultimate goal uh, is to purchase a piece of property near that school, um, but they're still trying to raise money for that property. The work that got us into the school was by providing money for a new roof on the school. We used that, plus we did lots of painting around the school too and gave it a fresh, much needed coat of paint. And uh, that work there allowed us to go in and do the real work, which is for us to hold a VBS for two hours each day. When we arrived, we were immediately thrown into the VBS. The only problem was we planned for 100 kids and there were over 200 there. So we had to scramble and come up with a new plan. In the morning session, we had Reagan read a story to the kids. We sang some songs and played some games with them. It was a little chaotic, but it was a great interaction with the kids. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't very effective in sharing the gospel. So in the afternoon, we had to change plans. I asked if there were any volunteers that'd be willing to share their testimony in the classroom. To my surprise, we had a, quite a few raise their hands. They were a little timid and nervous about it, but they were willing to give it a shot. And to me, that was very impressive. So the afternoon, we went class to class, and one person would give their testimony, and the pastor would present the gospel using this evangelism soccer ball here that you see. The classroom to classroom activity was way more effective in sharing the gospel than our initial attempt at VBS. The second day, we took another group of teens and went classroom to classroom sharing testimonies in the gospel to the morning session that we had the VBS with the day before. In the afternoon of the second day at Puerto Cortez, we took a team and visited Coca Gracias. And Coca Gracias is a ministry that's run by Brian Rourke. This ministry provides vocational training to youth and adults. Anything from welding, sewing, uh, mechanics, computers, and more. It's pretty amazing to see how God's using this ministry to help transform the lives and the communities around them. I wanted the teens to see this ministry because it's unique uh, and it's effective. Uh, and, and again, I wanted to give them a broad spectrum, a broad view of ministries here in Honduras. And this is a good one to show them. Our fifth day of work took us to a small town called Morazan. Now the reason we chose Morazan was twofold. One, 
This house church is busting at the seams, and I wanted to show a team this beautiful church. It's a basic structure that is attached to the pastor's house, but as you know, the church is not the structure. It's the people that fill the structure, and they are beautiful. They're passionate about evangelism and going out and reaching the lost. The second reason for visiting Morzon is because the Southwest Indiana District is sending another team next February and they'll be working here on this church, which is just down the road from their current location. In Morzon, we went to another school, uh, this time a high school, to do some basic cleanup and painting. Uh, we're also given the opportunity to go classroom to classroom and share the gospel again. This time it was a little harder because the kids were the same age and sharing your testimony with your peers can be pretty intimidating. I was super proud of all the kids that shared that day and the day before too. Testimonies are one of the most powerful witnessing tools that God's given us. It's the story of how God can transform lives, restore lives, and how He rescued us. And it's powerful because it's coming from real life personal experiences. And I really wanted to drive this point home to the teens. We're all broken. We all need a Savior. If we appear to be perfect to the world, why do we need a Savior? It's time to be real with others about our struggles and shortcomings and show them that we're not perfect and we need Jesus just to make it through this life. Another ministry we wanted the team to experience was the Jesus Film. Now most teams that go on work or witness trips have never used or seen the Jesus Film. And this is an incredibly effective tool for evangelism, and I felt like they would benefit from seeing it in action. We showed the film twice, once in Puerto Cortez at the house church, and once in Morazan in the middle of the road in front of where the church meets. I'd estimate that 150 people were at the first showing, and just over 100 were at the second showing. And I don't know how many came forward or accepted Christ, but I do know that lives were changed on those two nights. Not only the Hondurans, but the lives of the teens that were there were changed too. I always tell teams that they need to put people first and projects second. If they don't complete the project before they leave, it's okay. The project will be completed. It's better for them to focus on relationships rather than construction, painting, cleaning, whatever the task. This is especially true with kids. It was so good to see the teens go out of their way and play with the kids, hug the kids, and interact with them and make them feel like they were loved. For some kids, they may not receive this positive attention in their home. I know for a fact that the kids that hung around this team saw Jesus through each team member. This team had a lot of fun too. On their first day in the country, we had a birthday. So we purchased a pinata, filled it with candy, and let the teens go at it. And it didn't take long for the candy to spill on the ground. Did I mention that there was a small paint war too during the week? While the teens put a ton of paint on the walls of the church and schools, they also put some paint on their cohorts too. Some ended up with an entire coat of paint on them, while others ended up with just a couple of brush strokes. But this group knew how to have fun. Whether it was getting a little paint on each other, on the kids that came to visit, playing soccer with the kids, playing games back at the campground, or playing on the beach, they always had a good time. We're really blessed to have hosted this team. What a great group of youth. So here are some prayer requests for you guys to remember. The churches that we visited, which would be El Progreso, Puerto Cortez, Morazan. And pray for the pastors there. In El Progreso, it's Ephraim. In Morazan, it's Jalil. And in Puerto Cortez, the pastor there is Neftali. Pray for their ministries and the communities where they serve. Pray for the people that saw the Jesus films and pray that each church will see a harvest from those showings. And pray for the upcoming Southwest Indiana District team in February. Pray for the team members and that God will prepare them appropriately for the service here. Pray for the teens on the team. Each one had a unique encounter with God while they were here. Some have felt God called them into different ministries. Some were asked to take their relationship to a deeper level with God. Every one of these teens had some sort of experience. Thank you, Southwest Indiana District, for sending yet another team our way. We had an amazing time and would love it if you guys decided to send another youth team. Oh, wait, did I just say that out loud? Yeah, I guess I really mean it. We would love to have the opportunity to host another youth team. Thanks again for the crazy time 
You guys are awesome. <laughs>